Well, that was the first phase of <laughs> Orchid Chores Diaries, which had nothing really to do with orchids, but it's the start of the rest of what I need to be doing. What you're looking at is my wonderful biology experiment. It's my orchid roots bog. <laughs> uh, not to be confused with terrestrial bog orchids. This is the oldest root system of my Van der Chau Praia totem pole. Oh, blooms. <sighs> distraction much. Okay, back down and try and do that slowly. I'm in kind of a bit of a hurry, but I do want to take my time on this project. I'm only in a hurry because there's still so much to do and Mr. Siliano wants free flight. Anyway, so <laughs> yeah, these are the longest and oldest roots. And even though you may think they look dead, we are going to, what do you think? Change the water? <laughs> Biannual water change happens with this phase. But I'm always amazed when I look into this bog thing every time I do it, which obviously isn't a lot, <laughs> to see if the roots are still alive. Now, I'm not concerned if they're dead in there. I have a feeling they are not based on years and years of doing it like this. But I'm not concerned that these woody stick looking things are dead because here we have a same characteristic, very old woody stick looking like root has been inactive for two years at least and it's starting its growing point. So I have several of them already up aerial up there on the main stem and well I always thought you know <laughs> if we're gonna do Orchid Chores Diary it's not always going to be crystal clear clean water and my curiosity is always piqued. So let's try and see what we uncover this time around. I just got my sprayer here. Now it was a very overcast day and I wanted to do this on an overcast day because I don't have much humidity and these roots usually are not out of water and oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. They haven't touched the floor yet so that's good. At least they won't be affected by the heat. But okay, let me clean them off first so we can have a better look. So you see, <laughs> my form of water culture. <laughs> By the way, if my biological thing here at the opening did not turn you off, thank you for being here. I appreciate it. And if I sound a little funny, that's because I'm bending over trying not to fall because I have some mobility issues and it hurts me when I'm in this position. So normally I really shouldn't be talking while I do this and breathing heavily into your ear from what I what is not exertion, but it feels as though it is. OK. Ha, 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 ha. Always so exciting. Talk about growing roots or natural, hey? My intention is not to get all the algae off. It is just to show you with a cleaner root system the developments over the years of me having it in this environment. Got lots and lots of branching going on. Look, all these new roots and everything. Now, I hope all that is in focus, to be honest with you, because it's very difficult for me to see. And again, my voice is a little subdued because this is very difficult. Got to be careful because look, there's more here. Hey, isn't that amazing? I love it. And these are new branches at the top where the water level always changes depending on evaporation. So what I do with that pot that was once upon a time meant to be for Phragmopediums <laughs> is I just top the water up. If I see the level dropping, that's all I do. Whatever I have on hand, be it CalMag, be it fertilizer, I always just top the water levels up. So I have no idea what is going on. But because the root system above is so extensive and the orchid is growing super well, I'm actually not bothered by what is in that pot. However, out of curiosity, before I tip it out and before I clean it up, huh, let's get this repositioned here, all a little bit impromptu. And we're going to measure the parts per million as well as the pH. <laughs> let's start with the parts per million. Oh, that's not too shabby. I hope you can see that. That's almost 400 parts per million. That's what I, oh, here we go. If I shake it a little bit, it'll change. 
400, 403 up there. It's not too bad. I was expecting it to be super duper weak. As mentioned, I don't measure what I pour in there. I just pour something in that is left over and only if the water level has dropped to the point where the new branching roots are exposed. pH is gonna take a little bit longer, but I'm gonna ask, oh. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> well, not that long after all. I'm at 10.7 if that doesn't show on the screen. There's absolutely no nutrients being taken up from this bog here. Definitely not. Oh, but the roots aren't dead. Isn't that amazing? But I was thinking while I was going to do this with this usually taking a long time for pH to establish and stabilize, I thought, could I just take this opportunity and ask you to please like the video? <laughs> uh, yeah, even though it is unconventional, welcome to Ninja Orchids. And would you please subscribe because I do a lot of unconventional things here on my channel with my orchids and some things are a bit of a shocker and other things are classic and standard. So I would say not really a, ever a dull moment on the patio. It's not going to drop to any level that is going to be useful for nutrient uptake. We would need to be at 6.5 or 7. <laughs> this is 10.4. I'm going to have to clean my gadgets. I'll be right back. Actually, while I'm at it, I'm going to take my biology experiment with me, clean it out, then I'll be back. <laughs> okay, their biannual treat, correctly pH'd. This is about 500 parts per million of a well-balanced fertilizer at a pH of 6.7. Yes, biannual, you heard correctly. And another thing is that Orchid Chores Diary abbreviates to OCD. I have some tendencies of that, but I am not going to be scrubbing away. You can see I tried, there's some calcification to get this all super duper white and clean. I did go in down there with a paintbrush to get into the corners, but yeah, we're going to call that good. It's going to be okay. <laughs> Clearly, it's worked so far. So let's get these roots back in. And the reason I have to do this now is because what I thought I was going to do for this little Orchid Chores Diary, apart from cleaning my biology experiment, is go around, do a little tour of the patio from things that I see while I hose it down. If you would like to join me for that, that would be amazing. I don't know how it's going to go. I've never done it before because it could be pretty noisy with the water spray. But I thought, well, there's only one way to find out. Try it, right? If you're up for it, we'll have a little look-see look around what is going on, who's developing, who's doing what, and maybe we will find some blooms. There you go. Drink up in your beautiful fresh jacuzzi. Enjoy it while it lasts in three days. And that is going to be nice and green again. And all the little mini hippos can come and enjoy it as well. If you happen to enjoy Ice Age, I am totally nuts about those movies. I feel like Sid is my spirit animal, but if you like that movie, what you saw before we cleaned this out reminds me of that mud bath that Sid jumps into. But, you know, instead of hippos, they were rhinos and he ate the last dandelion. Ooh, salad. <laughs> you know what? Speaking of Orchid Chores Diary, here's a dead root. I know. I'll see you just now. I hope that you stick around for part three, four, I don't know what, I've already lost track. <laughs>
if you're judging my leaky hose, <laughs> so am I. Last year there was a dumpster fire and somebody came running very, very quickly to my property and saw there was a hose and they asked to borrow it and I'm like hey yeah absolutely tell me when to put the water and he said now put the water on now so I did and dumpster fire as in a literal trash dumpster not a dumpster fire as in something happened drama wise well never mind let me rephrase that it was drama anyway they brought the hose back without my spout and I was like um can I have my spout back and they were like oh oh so the spout got lost in all that mayhem. The fire was put out and then they brought me one back and replaced it with this one. And I know it's been a year. It's going to be okay. I can't help it. I'm not going to invest money in something that is working so far. And especially this time of year, who doesn't like a good little splash? I don't do this in the winter. Trust me. <laughs> So I've cleaned that little corner of the deep south because look at my Jomelia arborescence. Isn't she the adorable? Ah, love it. I've got so many more spikes coming. The first bloom is still doing well, but it's gonna go over not long now, seeing as my humidity levels today are 14%. <laughs> the other two have opened, so we're gonna have a succession of blooming. I'm trying to document them as they open one by one for a future video. So once again, I'm gonna ask you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Follow the progress of my Jomelia and other orchids as and when they bloom, or even as and when they recover come out of setback and all that fun stuff or well we're thinking positively as and when they come out of setback and yes everything gets hosed into the hedge <laughs>
And this is so much fun. I just have to be careful with the electronics. <laughs> ah, it's good to have you here with me. I'm doing this completely out of sync. Normally I work my way from the east side all the way to the west side. That's just because of the way the water flows, how the patio is inclined, you know. It all leads to the deep south. My favorite, well, one of my favorite places of the patio. But for the purposes of filming, this is so, so much easier. But if I'm not filming, I would have been done a while ago now. Making sure that I don't get you wet. <laughs> Making sure my camera doesn't heat up. Making sure my orchids don't get blasted with this nasty water. Making sure I show you some things along the way. I can hear Siliano in the background screeching. He'll be fine. I shall just ply him with popcorn. He'll be fine. <laughs> Left to do is the staging area. And then we're going into the blooming alley. I got to show you. Ah, it's amazing. Just amazing. Goodness me, birds make such a mess. You see that? with a flick of the water right over the edge there. Wee hee! <laughs> We've got this down to an art. Very little escapes my hose. Up and over. Ooh, I just checked the temperature. It's 30 degrees in the shade. Woohoo! Living la vida here. And I found my paintbrush. <laughs> Ta-da! I knew it had dropped in the back, but I couldn't see it. I mean, while well, I've got other paintbrushes, but it's nice to get my paintbrush back. Stick that behind my ear so we don't lose it again. <laughs> Normally I find lecker or a bit of lava rock, but today I found my paintbrush. I like this one better because the bristles are much, much softer. And you see why I start on the east? Because, you know, I already done all that. That's why. <laughs> I'm just going to have to go over that again. Isn't she beautiful? This is Dendrobium antenatum. Now in the viewfinder on screen, everything looks very, very yellow. She's green. It's just the reflection from the bright sun. She's got about 15, <laughs> again, me and counting. <laughs> Could be 18, I don't know. But a lot of spikes, let's put it that way. And she is beautifully fragrant, permeates like a honeysuckle, sweet sugar fragrance into the beautiful summer breeze. It's absolutely gorgeous. She is potted in lava rock and self-watering. Look. I love this one so, so much, and I'm happy that she's doing all right in my climate. Gotta watch the mealybugs with this one, though. Mealybug attraction, for sure. My blooming alley living up to its name. J'adore. And I am standing on a clean floor. <laughs> Another rhyme. I know, I need to stop that. Oh, but isn't this gorgeous? We've got Hibiki, we've got Luisendorf, we've got Zip. We've got Radicans, we've got Durigan, right in the far corner, we've got Kautskiana. All the blooms look to be opening up from my little extravagant bloom display creation back there when it was still in bud. Yeah, I don't think we've lost any. And then we've got Parkinsonianum. But the coup de grace, <laughs> drumroll please, because we have a first time bloomer I introduced to you, Lelia. Brade. Okay, this is going to be... Ah, there we go. Make sure I keep it in that dot. Ah, key. Isn't she a cutie? First time bloomer. First spike. She had no roots when she arrived in my collection. And guess what? I had to help a second spike with one teeny tiny bud. Look at that. Oh, I hope this is in focus. You know, I had to up the exposure a little bit because it was very dark, but mm, I'm going to take a picture and insert that instead. 
It's difficult once I mess with the light and the exposure on this camera, but isn't she gorgeous? Isn't she gorgeous? So, cartwheels around a super clean patio for my first time bloomer, Lelia Broad Day. As mentioned, completely rootless, had to be rooted in, and this is the result. I have a car on idle, I guess that is my hint, and also I've just been so busy with the patio on the ground level that now with a 14% humidity I have to direct my attention to the upper echelons because everything is pretty dry and we've got quite the breeze going. I want to say thank you so much for watching, I hope that you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed having you on the patio for little snippets here and there. I loved my flip-flop with wet feet. <laughs> Please remember to give this video a like, that would be greatly appreciated, as is your time watching the video, greatly appreciated, thank you so so much. I will continue with my patio chores, <laughs> we're not done yet, but for this video, thank you for watching. Have yourself a fabulous day on that one condition, though please that you stay safe. Take care, bye! Boy, Chico Bueno, Chico Bueno.